By the end of this video, you're going to have no problem at all finding the inverse of a function. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to help you do that. We'll start off with a pretty quick function to find the inverse of, and we'll talk in this problem specifically about what the inverse function actually is. And then we're going to go through three more problems, and these problems are going to be getting harder and harder as we go. The last problem looks pretty gross. That's a big fraction there with x's in multiple places. So we'll talk about how to do that, and then after we do all that, I'm gonna give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and I don't just mean any old notes here, I'm talking about principal notes, I'm gonna have that linked right in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video where you and I will go through and solve 10 more of these inverse function problems, but I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So starting off with this first problem here, we're given what f of x is, and we want to find the inverse function of f. Now, this negative one that's in the exponent here, it looks like it's in the exponent, it's not actually. This is just a notation that we use for the inverse function of f, and don't ask me why that's the way we do it. I don't know, and I don't think anybody else knows. I'm pretty convinced of that at this point. So, I'm gonna do two things in this problem. First, I'm gonna show you how to find the inverse function of f, and then second, we'll talk about what the inverse function of f actually means and what it does. So let's start off just finding the inverse function of f. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this f of x to a y. Remember, y is the same thing as f of x, so that's okay to do. Now, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch the x's and the y's. So wherever we see a y, we're going to write an x. And wherever we see an x, we're going to write a y. And so this becomes x equals 5y minus 20. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to solve for y. And once we solve for y, that will be our inverse function of f. So how do we start solving for y here? Well, we can start by adding 20 on both sides. Doing that, we're going to get x plus 20 is equal to 5y. And from there, there's only one other thing we have to do, and that's dividing by 5 on both sides. Doing that, we get y is equal to x plus 20 divided by 5. And now that we fully solve for y, we can just change this y to the inverse function of f. And that's how we'll write our answer. So that is our answer for problem one. So now we've actually went through and we found the inverse function of f. But what does the inverse function actually mean? Let's talk about that. The inverse function of f's job is to undo everything that was done in the regular f function. And so let's talk about f of x a little bit. f of x's job is to turn x, it takes an x, it turns it in to 5x minus 20. And it does that by taking the x that you put in and multiplying it by 5 and then subtracting that 20. The inverse function of f, we want to undo those operations. We want it to take in 5x minus 20 and give you back x. So you see how that's the opposite of f of x. And so you can see that when we're solving for y here, what we're doing is we're undoing those operations. We are adding that 20 on both sides, whereas before we're subtracting that 20. And we're dividing 5 on both sides, whereas before we were multiplying that 5. And that's what ends up giving us our inverse function. And also, we switched our variables here because we want to solve for y and get a function of x. We don't want to solve for x and get a function of y because this is a function of x, so we'd want this guy to be a function of x as well. So that's just like a notation thing. But as far as this inverse function goes, if you actually go and take our inverse function and plug in that 5x minus 20, remember, that is what f of x is. It's that 5x minus 20. Plug in a 5x minus 20 everywhere you see an x in this inverse function here, x plus 20 over five, and what you will get is x. And so that's the job of the inverse function. Again, it takes in the output of f of x, and it turns it back into x. So with the inverse function, we are undoing everything that f of x did. And so that's the job of the inverse function. With that being said, let's hop into the next problem for this video. And now we have f of x is two x cubed plus three. So let's repeat the same process. We're going to turn that y, or that f of x, into a y. And now, we just switch our x's and our y's. So 
we turn y's into x's and we turn x's into y's. So instead of being an x cubed, it's going to be a y cubed. And now we go through and solve for y. And once we do that, we have our inverse function. So we can start solving for y by subtracting three on both sides. And that will give us that x minus three is equal to two y cubed. So now let's divide two on both sides. And that will give us that x minus three over two is equal to y cubed. So great, we're almost done. We almost have y by itself, but that y has a third power on it. So we have to do the opposite of taking the third power on both sides. We actually have to cube root both sides. And once we do that, we get that y is the cube root of x minus three over two. And so great, we've solved for y, and now we can just change y, we can write that as the inverse function of f. And that is the answer for problem two. Moving on now to problem three. Here, f of x is now the square root of x plus eight minus three. So again, we're doing the same thing. We change f of x to start off with into a y. And we write y now is equal to the square root of x plus eight minus three. And now we switch our x's and our y's. So we write x is equal to the square root of this x turns into a y. So we get the square root of y plus eight minus three. And now let's just solve for y. I know it can seem a little gross because we've got square roots here, numbers under the square root being added, and then we have a number out here, but let's take it one step at a time. The first thing I want to do is isolate this square root. So I want to add three on both sides to get rid of that negative three. And that's going to give me x plus three is equal to the square root of y plus eight. Now, the reason why I want to isolate this square root, why I want to get the square root on one side and everything else on the other, is because now I can actually get rid of that square root by squaring both sides. If you tried to square both sides like up here, then it would just get really messy and you'd still have a square root at the end of the day. But here, we won't. We'll get x plus three squared, which by the way, this is the same thing as saying x plus three times x plus three is equal to the square cancels off with the square root and we get y plus eight. So now we have to go and multiply these x plus threes out. We'll start with x times x, that's x squared. Then we have x times three, that's three x. We have three times x, that's three x. And then we have three times three, that's a positive nine. And that's equal to y plus eight. So now what we can do from here is subtract eight on both sides. And when we do that, we end up getting that y is equal to, because we just have a y on the right hand side, I'll move that over to the left hand side, and then everything else I'll write on the right. So we have x squared first, then we have three x plus three x, that's six x. And then we have nine minus eight, that's a positive one. So that is our solution for y. And so all we have to do now, let's turn that y into the inverse function of f. And then we write x squared plus six x plus one. And that gives us our answer for problem three. So moving on to our last problem here for this video, now, our f of x is a fraction, and it's got x's in multiple places, so this is going to look pretty gross, but we'll just take it one step at a time. Again, we're going to do the same process as we've been doing throughout this entire video. The first step is to change this f of x into a y. So we write this as y equals 7 minus 3x over x minus 2. Next, we're going to switch the x's and the y's. So this y turns into x, 
and then these x's turn into y's. So it's seven minus three y, and it's y minus two. So now what we have to do is we have to solve for y. And that might be really gross because, well, we have y's on top and bottom of a fraction. So you're probably looking at this and going, what the heck do I even do here? And I remember being confused in this exact same spot. These problems really got me. So here's what we're gonna do. We see that we have a fraction here. And our number one priority right now is to get rid of that fraction. That's the big thing stopping us from moving on here. And so how I'm gonna get rid of that fraction is by multiplying that y minus two on both sides. Now I know what you might be thinking here. Yeah, if we multiply by y minus two on both sides, we will get to cancel out that fraction. But before we had all our y's on the same side. Now, when we multiply by y minus two on both sides, we have y's on different sides. So isn't that kind of counterproductive? Well, no, because our number one priority here is to get rid of the fraction. Then we can start talking about getting all our y's back to one side. So what we end up with is a y minus two times x is equal to seven minus three y. And now you can see that this x here can get multiplied through to the y minus two. So x times y is xy, and x times negative two is negative two x. And that's equal to seven minus three y. And now we can get all our y's to one side. Now we can do that step. And how we can do that is by adding three y to both sides. We'll get all our y's to the left hand side. And you see that on the left hand side, not all of these pieces have a y. We have that negative two x there. So we wanna get that to the other side and we can do that by adding two x on both sides. So now all the y's are gone from the right hand side and all the non y pieces are gone from the left hand side. And so what we're left with is xy plus three y is equal to seven plus two x. Great. And so you might be like, well, where do we go from here? It's actually not that bad. Both of these terms have a y, so we can factor it out. And when we factor out this y, we are dividing each of these terms by y. So xy divided by y is x, and 3y divided by y is three. That's how I got the x plus three. And that's equal to seven plus two x. So now the only thing stopping y from being by itself is this x plus three. It's being multiplied on to y. And so we just do the opposite and we divide that x plus three off. And if we do that, we will end up getting that y is equal to a seven plus two x divided by x plus three. And now that we've solved for y, we can write that y as the inverse function of f. And that's our answer for problem four. So that is inverse functions in a nutshell. That's how to find the inverse function of f. And we also talked about what inverse functions actually are. And if you feel pretty comfortable with all that, then here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here I give you that f of x is negative three all over x plus three, and I'm asking you to find the inverse function of f. So give that problem a shot. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, then again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now again, I do have that extra video where you and I will go through and solve 10 more of these inverse functions problems. So especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, or you're just looking for some more review, I highly recommend you check out that video in the description down below. And remember that the notes for this video are also in the description. Lastly, make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel right now. Uh, I actually recently just graduated college, which means that I am now in a severe monetary deficit of uh, around like $35,000. Uh, if you subscribe, you can help me out with that. That would be really nice. Um, and yeah, so that's gonna do it for this video, guys. And I will see you soon.